me start off. Um, you, your sector, the hotel uh, hospitality sector, has been a really quiet, nothing's happened, no issues that involve strategy, either long or short term, for the last few years. But on a serious note, how you probably faced two dramatic uh, issues over the last, what, 13, four, 13 months. One was more or less immediate. What do you do strategically? And the other is, and what do you do after that? How did you think about the strategy? What did you do to formulate the strategy? And what, what, how are you formulating strategy? Peter, it's a, it's a great question. And you hit, really hit the nail on the head. Um, we were all faced with an unprecedented pandemic. None of us planned for it in our business plans. Fortunately, I've been in this industry for north of 30 years, and I've been through a few cycles. So I had experienced, obviously, the 9-11, uh, the great financial crisis. Um, I even saw early in my career when Marriott struggled in the late 80s. So as a seasoned veteran, I clearly knew the first thing was not panic. I'm also surrounded by an extraordinary team of men and women. And what we were faced with initially as we encountered was we needed to make clear and decisive actions. Uh, first and foremost, to take care of the men and women on our team. And then secondly, the associates on property and also to protect our guests. So we immediately suspended operations at 38 of our 60 hotels, about 85% of our rooms. We suspended our dividend. We reduced CapEx by 75%. It really became a focus on liquidity and being able to really manage the crisis so that candidly we could get to the other side. We initially began with a, burn, a cash burn rate of, of about $85 million per month. Now, unfortunately, we were a public company, but that is a brutal headwind for a business that has both operating leverage and financial leverage. We immediately set out to not only close those hotels, but figure out how we could save money. Uh, we then reached out to our bank group and saw covenant relief. Uh, we knew that they would work with us, certainly given the facts and circumstances. But then we immediately set out to do our first um, high yield bond deal that allowed us to raise about 650 million. And then we pushed out our maturities. We were among the first, if not the first in our sector. And I'm really proud of our team by being that proactive. We subsequently followed up with a second round and a second financing which allowed us to raise an additional 750 million in equity. So approximately 1.4 billion in additional equity and pushing out maturity. So that turned out to be a really wise and prudent decision for the management team at Park. After you get through phase one, you've closed everything, you've shut down, you've protected your associates, you've protected obviously our guests. You then got to make the phase two decision as to when do you reopen? And given what we were faced with, with a series of government mandates, even within states and cities, uh, take uh, New York State versus New York City and the different requirements there, or the state of Illinois versus the requirements in the city of Chicago. And even today, as we're sort of reopening hotels almost more than a year later, we only have 51 of our 60 hotels open. So we still have hotels. The New York Hilton is still closed. The, Chicago Hilton. We have four of our hotels in San Francisco that are also closed. Part of that's government mandate, but part of that's because those offices haven't reopened and those employees haven't resumed. We really don't have enough demand to, to really justify opening our business at that point. So we reopened our hotels. So we've got now, as I mentioned, uh, almost about seven of them that we uh, will end of the first quarter so will be at about 53 of our 60 hotels. We reduced our cash burn rate from the 85 million that I mentioned down to low 40s, about 42 million. We also identified about 70 million in property level savings that we were taking out of, of the operating costs. This crisis required us to think about the business differently, to recognize that there would be changing customer preferences also coming out of the pandemic, and we needed to be proactive. We needed to really work with all of our stakeholders. Um, I am really pleased and proud to say that the industry came together. And I've never seen in my 30 plus years better communication, better collaboration among the owners, the brands, um, uh, about finding a leaner, more operating, more cost efficient uh, 
uh, operating model as we move forward. And again, when you talk about strategic uh, initiatives, that became really a, a high priority for us. Um, we also set out to sell some non-core assets. Now, we didn't want to sell assets in the height of the pandemic because obviously the COVID discount would have been really high. So what we did is we identified assets, we talked to prospective acquirers, but we concluded that it wasn't in our best interest to be selling assets at that point. Uh, and as a result, we sort of held off. We're now marketing some hotels now that where we as we're coming out of the, of the pandemic and the recovery is beginning to take hold. It'll make more sense to really sell some of those assets now. So Tom, could we I were ask, thoughtful. We were proactive. Could I, uh, sorry to step on you there, interrupt me. Just yep. you, you talk about the 85 million burn going down to 40. Um, what would your EBITDA had been in 2019, just for a frame of reference for the view? Yeah, we, we would have been north of 800 million plus or minus in that range as a, as a public hotel REIT. And we're the second largest uh, lodging REIT with about 60 assets and, a, and about 10 billion in assets uh, plus or minus. Yeah, I just wanted the viewer to have a, uh, right. a perspective of the magnitude of the swing. I know you knew it, but... Yeah, and, and when you think about that swing, I mean, we went from obviously that 800 million plus or minus to, you know, losing a few hundred million in 2020. Never in the history of lodging have we, has anyone seen anything really this unprecedented. And we use the phrase that we were hit by an asteroid and no fault of anybody's, but we certainly had to respond. Well, Bill, th that's an easy kind of lead into you right on leadership, I think, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And and if you look at the loss in the perspective of the overall, you know, environment, Tom, that's that's quite an accomplishment for sure. So hats off to you for that. Mm -hmm.